So I've got uh, the first one. <clears throat> uh, does cleave to your wife mean you have to give up your mother? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Here, here's the question. Uh, the, the passage is taken out of uh, Genesis chapter 2. It says, uh, a man uh, shall leave his mother and father and will cleave to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Uh, this is the first uh, relationship that we see human to human. Okay? Uh, there is a very fine line that we have to walk, and, and this one actually, uh, I really wanted to do this one with the service, the message that I had, because we're talking about parents and children and children and parents, um, and this, this goes hand in glove with that. There's a very fine line that we walk, okay? Because in Exodus, uh, we are reminded, we're, we're actually given the directive to honor our mother and our father. And, and as part of the Ten Commandments, uh, it is the first commandment that we're given that comes with a promise. Okay? Uh, because God says that you will honor your father and mother, and then what happens? That it may go well with you. Okay? Um, the other side of that is, if you do not honor your parents, um, things don't go well for you. Okay? So we have this, this directive to honor, um, we also, uh, a further directive, we see in Ephesians uh, 6, 6, 1, it says, children, obey your parents. Uh, so where is this, this fine line? The fine line is uh, when God gives to us children to, to be stewards of, because we have to remember that they're his first. They're his first. He has committed them to our care for a time. Our job is to train them, to discipline them, to uh, all of the things that we talked about last week. Uh, we, we need to nurture them with the ultimate goal being, okay, get out of my house and establish your own. Okay? Now, uh, that's, that's how I see it, you know. Um, you got a job, you got a car, a car now go get an apartment. Um, Christy's not as excited about that as I tend to get. Um, although with the last one, drawing close for the time for the last one to be out, I'm thinking, well, that's, that's a really big yard to mow. <laughs> it was supposed to work out that Judah would be old enough to mow before Thaddeus moved out. <laughs> it's not working that way. Um, so here, here's, here's the dilemma. When our children are young, they are called to obey. Okay? Don't do that. Why? What's the parent's response? Because I said so. Because I said so. But this one's got it. Because <laughs> I said so. Because if you tried to explain to each one of your kids why you told them that, you'd never stop talking especially with Iowa. Um, they are committed into our care so that we might train them, so that we might discipline, so that we might grow them. But there comes a time when and God has built this into people, especially young men. Okay? There is a, a directive, a desire, a longing to establish their own household. Um, I remember uh, Christy being absolutely shocked um, when she was talking to Kathy. Uh, at this point, we still had all of our children at home, and Kathy made some kind of comment to the effect that, um, yeah, it was absolutely time for Chance to leave. He needed to go. <laughs> Christy's, Christy's heart was like, oh my gosh, how can she say that? And then about 18 months went by, and she's like, Christopher, you've got to go. 
<laughs> it is time, child. Okay? Now, you know, we, we laugh at that, we can make fun of that, but, but really, um, the dynamic and the nature of the relationship has to change when the child becomes an adult. Okay? Um, unfortunately, this is one of the areas that we see a tremendous amount of difficulty because you're taking two people from oftentimes radically different backgrounds. Um, you know, Christy and I are very, very different. We were raised very different. Uh, she has no clue how to stand at attention or right face or left face or, you know, the, the, the white glove under the bed. And uh, she doesn't, she's like, what? Under the bed? Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but it's not just the two people because the two people are most often connected to other people and you, you try to fit this thing together and if you're not careful, it can become ugly very quick. Okay? And, and there's two sides that tend to uh, be the extremes in this. One is uh, the son or the daughter uh, that, that won't change the dynamic of the relationship with their parent in respect to their spouse. Okay? Uh, and and you know, you, you'll see this uh, a lot of times with young men that, that are tethered to the, the mom's apron strings. Um, the dynamic of the relationship has to change, but it should not end. It grows up. Okay? Um, and that's one of those things that, that God put in children, you know, they go through that hormonal change and they get to the point where all of a sudden you realize maybe them moving out is a good thing and, and they're ready to move out. And, and, but see, then, then there's, this, there, there's this process whereby they go from being your child that is committed into your care to being a peer. And, and oftentimes people stumble over this process of them becoming a peer. Um, especially when uh, the two most significant people in a young man's life are his mother and his wife. Okay? And, and um, a lot of times men being, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Egrich says that uh, Men have an honor code, they don't want to fight. And so most of the time, men just duck. And, and if there's tension between mom and there's tension between wife, um, men are not really good at dealing with tension with women. Okay. With men, not a problem. We say how we feel, they say how they feel. We tell them they're wrong, they tell us we're wrong. We might dot the I and then we go out and we're friends again. That, that's pretty much how it ever works. Women are not like that. At all. <laughs> okay. um, so, what does this have to do? Scripturally, when they are our children, they, they're committed to us, they have to obey us. Okay. And if we are godly parents, um, we will work this such that we do not... Um, what does it say in, in uh, Ephesians? It says, um, do not exasperate your children. Do not frustrate, do not annoy. Now, there, there's a, a big question here because when the kids hit those hormones, everything annoys them. So um, th that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about those things that, that you just keep driving and driving and driving that really have no difference one way or the other, okay? So as children, they obey. As they grow up, I think the, the nature of the relationship has to change so that they're peers. And there, there is a way that this can happen and still remain connected. Okay? And I can't tell you what that way is because it's different from person to person. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, you, they are still to honor us. Now, here, here's the dilemma with that. Diane, what does, what does honoring mean to you for, for your son? Um, respect. What's that look like? Um, wearing a coat in the winter when he's told to. <laughs> 
Did you hear that, Thaddeus? So it's not just him. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Okay. Gordy, what does that look like to you? What does honor look like to you? Agree with our respect. Okay, but what does it look like? Uh, being willing to learn from your parents. Okay, having an ear to listen. Okay, anybody else? What does honor look like to you? Because see, here's, here's whoa. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay, um, we use this word to honor but we really have a difficult time defining what that is. We know when we feel dishonored, okay? But, but we're not altogether sure what honored is. Okay, so, Deb? Knowing your place within, within authority. Knowing your place within authority. within authority, okay? So, knowing your place, what is your place? To be under your parents. As as okay, Th those are words, and those are good, <laughs> but we need to put it in a practical way for the, the children, the young adults, the, the adults, we need to let them know what it looks like. Say, okay, what's your proper place in authority? Well, as a child, oh, okay. it's radically different than it is for a grown-up. You're not going to use abusive language. Okay, absolutely. Um, you will listen to what they have to say, you don't have to agree but you still have to show respect to yep. listen. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't know how to put it into words. I just know, I know what it is. <laughs> and that's the dilemma, isn't it? That's, that's the problem. We know when, when we're feeling dishonored, but to put into practical steps what makes us feel honored that can change from day to day. Chris? The ability to teach humbleness to youngsters, you know, okay. to be humble. To set an example for to them? To set an example to yep. go give a homeless person a cheeseburger or something like that. I mean, okay. just to take step out of your comfort zone and, and just humble yourself. Right. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> that, that means going to a rock concert without earplugs? <laughs> no, because I don't go to those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Right. What? Wow. Did you guys speak up? <laughs> wow, that's cool. Um, I'm still not going, Ben. <laughs> um, okay, so he, here's, here's the crux of this. Give up your mom, absolutely not. But the, the relationship has to change. It has to grow. It, it, it has to, just as the child grows up into maturity and becomes a young adult, that relationship has to grow up in maturity. One of the things that we really struggle with as parents is uh, sometimes it's hard for us to shut up, to mind our own business. Um, Christy and I, uh, as our, our kids grew up and they married and they moved out, moved out and then married. Um, well, I don't know, that, that actually married and moved out happened once. Uh, I got to move one of my sons in to his apartment while he was on his honeymoon. <laughs> that won't happen again, Satch. <laughs> uh, just FYI. Um, we try very hard to not interject into our children's lives. But we always want to be available if they need something. They want to talk if they they uh, uh, struggling with an issue. Um, Christy and I, if if we see something that, that is of a concern to us, we will discuss it amongst ourselves and then we will pray and, and we'll just say, okay, God, if this is something you want us to address, open the door. Uh, one of my sons uh, really got into um, cars 
in the space of, I don't know, three or four years, he went through three cars because he always wanted something different. And having gone that route when we were first married, we knew how bad that could turn out, but we didn't say anything because it wasn't our place, okay? One day, he asked me, so Dad, what do you think about this? Sweetie! <laughs> Sweetie! Come on! <laughs> um, and then we could share. If, if he hadn't asked, if God hadn't opened the door, we would have just let him go, okay? So what, what does uh, giving up your mom? Absolutely not. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think there's a, uh, I think there's a fear in a lot of young women uh, that they are going to have to be their, their fiancé or, or spouse's mom. Uh, and actually that brings us to a whole separate issue about mothering your husband and you know, don't do that. That's a whole nother, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, give up your mom? No, it shouldn't. But sometimes um, we, we may have a period where we're not as close as we used to be. Keep praying. Keep praying. God will open doors. Um, don't let them see you forcing the issue. Be calm. Take a deep breath. Pray lots. Okay? So, uh, here, a lot more verses um, for you. I will leave this up here. Uh, I've got one more that I'm going to do really quick. Um, what does the Bible say about voting in our elections? As near as I can tell, the United States of America isn't in the Bible, at least not as that, um, so nothing. Directly, I don't think Scripture says anything per se. However, uh, I believe Scripture points us in, into some directions, okay? So the first thing is we operate from the understanding that God appoints rulers and authorities according to his will. Okay. Um, we see in Proverbs, uh, righteousness exalts a nation, uh, but sin is a, re a reproach to any people. Okay. So we see that God has a way that he wants things being done. Uh, he, he wants he, things to be done in righteousness. Uh, not in sin. Um, uh, Hosea chapter 8, actually I'm going to read this real quick so that you guys can kind of understand where I'm coming from. Um, Hosea chapter 8, verse 4. Um, they made kings, this is God speaking, he says, they made kings, but not through me. They set up princes, but I knew it not. With their silver and gold, they made idols for their own destruction. Now, um, I, I believe this still fits with the continuity of Scripture. Uh, God is saying here that uh, they, they brought, they, they appointed kings and princes that God <coughs> didn't know. Um, if God appoints everyone into position of leadership, how did He not know this? I don't think He. Did, it, that's what it means. I think what He's saying is that uh, sometimes God will give you the leaders you want rather than the leaders you need. Okay? For example, Saul. Okay? Um, that's, a, that's kind of an interesting study. Um, Samuel's sons were appointed as judges and they did not judge rightly and they took bribes. And as a direct result of that, the nation of Israel came together and they sent uh, men to go talk to Samuel and said, we want a king. Read, infer into that, we don't want your sons. Okay? And so, uh, what king did God give them? Saul. Oh, you could say it louder. Saul. Saul, yeah. And Saul was, I think, exactly what they thought they wanted. He was head and shoulders above everybody else. He was a, a good figure of a man, and, and unfortunately, didn't work out so well. Okay? Um, I believe that there are times when God appoints someone not because 
it his uh, his heart or his desire, but because it serves his purposes. Okay. Um, so, uh, what does it say as far as um, voting? Um, I think as a believer, it is our responsibility in this form of government that we live in, a, a constitutional republic, where we have the power to vote for or against, um, I think we need to step into that and we need to vote righteousness, okay? Now, I know that is a, a, a so often, our votes come down to the lesser of two evils. Um, for whatever reason, politics attracts people that sometimes are, are not the, uh, the paragon of virtue. Uh, my, my belief, this is, this is Glenn talking, this is not scripture. My belief is that you need to prayerfully consider who you would endorse, who you would support, I believe absolutely that there are some absolutes in Scripture that give us guidelines as to who we should support and who we shouldn't, okay? Now, just so you guys know, I'm an independent, okay? I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. Um, I have no vested interest in either of those parties. What I am interested in is what the, what the platform is that the candidate is, is on, okay? So... Um, Absolutely, I believe that we should vote uh, because righteousness exalts a nation. We want righteous people leading us, okay? Um, anyway, there's that. That will be up here as well. And then I will try to get to Diane's by the end of the year.